Hello, this is Mr. White, and the focus of this video is solving equations with the graph and calculator by finding x-intercepts, part one. There will be a part two of this video that gets into a few advanced, tech, advanced techniques. So in class, we uh, looked at this quadratic equation, x squared minus 3x minus 10 equals zero, and we found that that one is very quick and easy to solve algebraically. It factors very nicely, and we get the two solutions, x equals negative 2 and x equals 5. So sometimes, honestly, the algebraic route is the quickest and easiest. Even if you have a calculator in your hand, you still want to consider just doing it algebraically. But we find that if we just change one small thing, if I, if I change this 10 here to an 11, we find that that changes things, that all of a sudden this is not very easy to factor. And we have to resort to, to different techniques, such as completing the square or quadratic formula. So that's not the focus of this video, to remind you how to do those, uh, those techniques. So I'm just going to show it very quickly and remind you about how long it takes. Completing the square, it's not the most difficult thing you'll ever do, but it's also uh, um, not just a one or two step process. So here I'm completing the square. And uh, the real diligent student will pause this and, and just make sure that you recall how to do all those steps. Um, completing the square is something you're expected to, to know from Algebra 2. And in the end, we algebraically get x equals 3 plus root 53 over 2, which if we punch it into a calculator is about 5.140 if, if we round it off to three decimal places, or 3 minus root 53 over 2, which is about negative 2.140. And again, I, I'm, I'm trusting that the incoming pre-calculus student would be familiar with that process. So this is one that we can do algebraically, but let's look at how we would solve the same problem graphically. So here it is again, x squared minus 3x minus 11 equals 0. And I want you to compare that with this function, y equals x squared minus 3x minus 11. Um, I basically just took that 0 and I replaced it with a y. And when I take that function and, and plot it, I get an infinite number of, of points. I say an infinite number of points. I've, I've highlighted four of them here, um, put the coordinates of four of them here. And I want to remind you, I think students lose sight of this, that these points represent the solutions to this, to this equation here. So for example, if I take this point right here, it's x value of 3. And if I plug it in for x, and I get 3 squared minus 3 times 3 minus 11. And I evaluate that. The result is negative 11. And that's where this y value came from. That's where this point came from. Uh, if I do the same thing with this other point, 4, if I take x equals 4 and I plug it into this equation, 4 squared is 16 minus 3 times 4, which is 12. 16 minus 12 minus 11 would give us negative 7, and that's where this y value came from. And if I kept on doing that an infinite number of times for an infinite number of different x values, I would get all these points here, and that's what forms the parabola. So again, I think students lose sight of the fact that these points along this curve represent the infinite number of possibilities that make this equation here true. Okay, so having said all that, I want to come back to this quadratic uh, equation that we wanted to solve and ask you which points on the graph are we interested in? Which points on the graph are we interested in? Well, remember, we originally had a zero over here, and then when we made the function, we replaced that zero with a y. So I ask you, look at the graph and decide where is the y value equal to zero, which is what we really wanted here. Pause the video if you need to. I do hope when you listen to these videos that you listen actively and uh, uh, pause once in a while and, and make sure you understand everything that, that's, that's being said here. And hopefully you say that the points we are interested in, where along this parabola the y value is zero, is right here and right here. Those are the two points whose y value is zero. And the question is, what are the x values that give us a y value of zero? So I'm putting question marks here. Which x values make the y value zero? What's going to put a zero right here?
Uh, with that in mind, let me tell you what the, the thought process you want to follow when you use the calculator is. So in a moment, I'll show you how to get this image on the calculator. But again, we're interested in those two red dots there. And the calculator is going to prompt you for a left bound and a right bound. And I want to discuss conceptually what that is. Um, first of all, your calculator can only give you one solution at a time. There is no way to get it to, to spit out both of the, the coordinate pairs for both of those points at the same time. You're going to have to do this process twice, once for each point. So let's focus on this left-hand point first. Let's say that's the first one we're going to find. And again, the calculator, uh, as we'll see, is going to prompt you for a left bound and a right bound. And I want you to think of left bound and right bound as being these, these walls here that bound the, uh, the, the graph. So if we could uh, set the left bound and the right bound like this, that would then tell the calculator to only look between those two bounds and find the only solution between those two boundaries. You could imagine that the calculator would get a little bit confused. If I set the right bound over here, the calculator really has no way of knowing which of those two possibilities I want. Um, so again, if I want to find the, the right-hand solution, I'm going to need to move my left bound over a little bit and set it something like this. So the left bound and the right bound tell the calculator, look between these two walls. Now it would be nice if the calculator actually displayed walls here. Um, students sometimes get confused that, by the interface a little bit here, but I want you to imagine the, these walls when we're doing this. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to the calculator here. Um, I'm going to remind myself real quickly that equation x squared minus 3x minus 11. We are going to again type in this function y equals x squared minus 3x minus 11. So let me go to the calculator here. Okay computer's taking a little bit of time. Uh, you're used to this in class. Okay, so let's go ahead and type. Um, actually, let me get a clear page back here just so we're not so distracted. Okay, let's go ahead and type. I went to this y equals button right here, and I'm going to do y equals x, notice which buttons I'm pressing, x squared minus 3x minus 11. And if you've never used your calculator before, or if it just happens to be on its default settings, when you hit graph, you're going to notice your parabola goes a little bit off the screen. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and tell you how to, how to fix that, and in the, in the part two of the video, we'll discuss a little further how you, you know what settings to use. But go to Window right now. So, so type this in your calculator. Go to Window, and go down to Y min, and just make it negative 15. and then hit graph, and that'll fix it. How did I know negative 15? Again, we'll get into that in another video. But again, imagine these left and right bounds. I want to find this point right here, so I am going to go to second, calc, and I want the x-intercept, and another word for the x-intercept is zero. So I could arrow down, I could use the arrow keys, and, and go to zero, or I could just press the number two here, and that'll, that'll go down to item number two. So I press number two, and it's prompting me now for the left bound. It's going to find this zero or x-intercept. One way I could do it, I'm going to show you one way here, and then I'll show you the other way for the other solution, is just use these arrow buttons. And I'm going to, this, uh, uh, to the left of this point. So I use the left arrow button to go to the left of this point, and imagine this vertical wall. This is where I wish the calculator really drew a vertical wall here, but imagine a vertical wall through this point. And I'm going to go ahead and say, yes, that's my left bound. For my right bound, I want to pick a wall that's right about here. So let me arrow over and go ahead and say, enter. And when it says guessed, if, if I've picked my left bound and right bound carefully, I don't need to worry about the guess. Just hit enter. And there is my zero, or my, my solution. So let me drag that onto the, um, oops, I guess I, it's not going to let me do that. Computer's being uncooperative as usual here. OK, there we go. Um, there, I got one of my two solutions. 
Let me go ahead and use a slightly different technique for the, for the second solution. Again, I'll remind you, we will start out the same, going to second calc. And notice that calc is right above this trace button. So second calc. And once again, I'll press 2 for, for, to pick calc 0. And instead of using the arrow keys this time, I'm going to show you a different technique. Let's read off the graph here. If I read off the graph, I'm going to approximate what my solution is. I'm going to approximate it's at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm just reading the little tick marks here. And I'm guessing that my solution is at around x equals 5. And I'm going to ask myself, what's the number that's to the left of 5 on the number line? Well, if this is 5, a little bit to the left of it would be 4. So why don't I go ahead and just type 4? I don't have to use the arrow keys. Type 4, enter. What's the number to the right of my approximation? Again, I'm guessing that this is about 5, so to the right of that would be, let's say, 6. Or if I'm not real confident, why don't I even pick 7? Seven? 7, enter. So again, you can either use the arrow keys or you can type in the numbers for your left and right bound. Once again, when it prompts you to guess, just hit enter. And there is my second solution. So let me drag that on the screen. Those are the two solutions that the calculator has given us. And I don't know if you recognize those numbers, but those are the same two numbers that I got earlier when we did this algebraically, or when I did this algebraically. So uh, negative 2.14, positive 5.14. If I go back to my algebraic uh, solution here, there are those same two solutions. The calculator and the, and the algebra are agreeing with each other. And that is how you find two solutions with our graphing calculator. Okay, so let's see if this all made sense to you. Go ahead and try this one on your own. Solve x squared minus 8x minus 3 equals 0 graphically using your graphing calculator. And the diligent student will also go ahead and solve this algebraically using completing the square or quadratic formula and verify that the answers are the same. Uh, in your homework assignments, some of your homework assignment problems are going to be asking you to go ahead and do it both ways. And I do uh, suggest very strongly that you be keep, keep honest about this. Go ahead and do it both ways when the book suggests you do so. Okay, so uh, go ahead and pause the video at this point because in just a moment here I'm going to go ahead and reveal the answer. So when, when you've got an answer, go ahead and restart the video and see if your answer agrees with mine. Okay, here are the answers. You should have gotten two points of, uh, or two x-intercepts, two zeros, uh, one over here kind of close to the origin and one a little bit further away. And in case you're viewing this on a screen where you can't really see uh, these highlighted numbers very clearly, let me go ahead and do this. Those are the two solutions you should have gotten from your graphing calculator.